Hello again, welcome back to the shop. Once again, it's Mike. I'm joined today by Walter. Uh, more accurately, Walter dressed as a belter from Amazon's series, The Expanse. A couple videos ago, we built this helmet out of an original Chinese high altitude TK-1 flight helmet. Now, that is the same type of helmet using more or less the same parts that the prop department used to make the helmets for the first and second series belters, and even actually some belters today. Uh, in the current series, use these types of helmets. Well, the intention was for me to do a build video about making the entire costume, which I wasn't able to because of parts and illness and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's finally done, and here it is, and you can't see all of it from here, but I'll show you some all angles of it. But this is a completed belter vac suit using as many of the correct parts or original parts, or real parts, used by production to make these vac suits, the correct harness, the correct lights, helmet, other lights, gloves, except, uh, accessories, uh, bits and bobs, boots, what have you. And I'm going to show you how to make the rest of the suit because we've already done the helmet. So now we need to do the harness, the suit, the boots, the gloves, etc. And I'm going to walk you through what they're made from and how you go about modifying them. Now, I wasn't able to go into a huge amount of detail because I did get quite ill and uh, I wasn't able to film in as much detail as I would have liked. Now, as I said earlier, one of the types of harnesses used for the making of these vac suits is the Guardian Edge fall protection harness. And it's these vest style that has, this is what I'm referring to when I say vest style, is this business right here that goes up over the shoulders. There's not a huge amount that has to be done to these um, other than replace all of the buckles with Cobra buckles. And then I've done this down here where I actually have two opposing Cobra buckle sets, one of which is for attaching the backpack and the other one is for attaching these thigh straps, which have been swapped out with Cobra buckles. Now these are not specifically Cobra brand buckles. These are actually sort of knockoffs off of Amazon because real Cobra buckles are very expensive. Now, the other thing you have to attach to this are these two lights. And now these are Black Diamond Storm 160 lumen lights, at least these two are. And they were, you can clearly see they were different colors. This is an out of production model. This very jagged, very sharp edged design has been out of production for a couple years. So they're a little bit hard to find. There is a couple different options for lights you can use. And uh, actually there's some 3D printed variants of these lights available on both the Facebook cosplay group created by Carl Webb. And then also there's a couple different ones on Amazon. I think Mark Perino is one of the people that made the lights as well. And I'll be mentioning their names a lot. Now one of the little details that I added to this is actually this little carabiner here, which if you look on this book here, the art and making of the expanse. This is an Omega. This is an Omega carabiner. Now this very same model carabiner you can actually see in the art and making of the expanse hanging on Stephen Strait's harness. And uh, you actually see it throughout the series. It's still attached to his harness. So that is the correct type, the Omega carabiner. And I just hook it there and leave it. But that's the harness. And of course I painted the whole thing black and move some straps around. And it's really gonna be dependent on yourself. Uh, there's a big, huge ring on the back of these, which you can remove because they're quite heavy. Um, but let's step off of this and move on to the backpack. So this is uh, a very accurate version of one of the backpacks from the Expanse. It's worn by the Belters and actually worn by the Rossinante crew as well. They use the same type of pack. And this starts life as one of these, an OGIO or OGIO, O G I O Mach 5. Now you can find these on eBay anywhere between $80 and $190, or in one case $500 for some reason. But they're a motorcyclist backpack, and the out, outer shell is semi-solid. It's not, it's not certainly not like carbon fiber or anything, but it sort of looks like it. Um, and this was just a matter of cutting this bit out here, punching some holes in it installing this 3D printed part here, which I'll actually take this out of here and you can see it. I haven't, I haven't glued this in place, but pop that off. This is the faceplate. This 3D printed object uh, was actually created by Mark Perino and uh, I'll put the link below uh, for the Thingiverse file for this so that you can print these off as well. And this just holds the electronics. Now this is a Featherlight uh, touchscreen with a, um, with a blue fruit feather 
controlling it. I don't have a battery attached to it, but it shows the oxygen readout like you would see in the in the show, and it's actually it's actually quite fun uh, to have it running. Now this is all powered by a um, a NICAD battery, so you have to be careful doing that with travel. You might want to convert it over to nine volts. The other part of this that's down in here, this actually comes from uh, Mr. Carl Webb off of the Facebook cosplay group for The Expanse. This is how, I, he helped me a lot with making this suit. And he sort of figured a lot of this stuff out. Now there, when you get one of these backpacks, there's an internal panel that has little pockets and stuff in it. I chopped that out entirely. And I did that so that I could install this fan, which is just powered by a nine volt battery. I'm still working out how to rig everything in here and some CPAP tubing, like off of a CPAP machine. And that is actually accurate because you can see in a couple of scenes where they're actually using CPAP tubing coming from the packs to the helmets. So, and then I'll link, I'll put the link below for this fan, which I got off of eBay relatively inexpensively. And this little bitty fan, when you apply power, provides enough air with a little support from a tiny little motor in, uh, inside the helmet to provide enough fresh air to keep you from fogging up too bad. Now, if you're in a humid day, you're, you're fighting a losing battle and it's just, you're going to fog up and that's just the way it is. But that's the electronics side of this backpack. The other mods that you need to do are to the straps. When you, when you buy one of these things, you're going to have, of course, four straps like you would. And it's, these two are the straps that came with it rather truncated with, of course, Cobra buckles attached to it, the Fairwind Tactical Belt, as it's called. And then here on the shoulder straps, I actually chopped them short and installed Cobra buckles on the ends because those actually attach to those Cobra buckles on the shoulders of the harness. This is also a 3D printed component. And for attaching the helmet oxygen hose, I actually pulled the end of the oxygen hose off, which you see in the previous video, and installed it here so that with a bit of CPAP extension on there, I can just work it on there. And it actually has a fairly positive hold. So that allows air to transfer into the helmet to keep my face at least slightly cool and help mitigate some of the fogging. The other things that you need to add to this, besides some paint, obviously, and a lot of uh, graphics that were created uh, by uh, Mike Jenkins, who just sent them to me at random, and also Jim Murray, the props master for The Expanse. When I did the um, exoskeleton for my friend Suzanne, um, he sent me graphics, the original, well, not the original, but copies of the original graphics used on the screen used prop of the exoskeleton. And I didn't know where they all went, so I had some left over, and I thought, well, what's, why not use some of them? So this decal here and this one here are actually... Those are actually production made from the Expanse, which is just kind of adds a little bit to this, uh, to this, this uh, vac suit. Um, these little arrows here are also from the Expanse, but this fragile sticker, these two, and this one down here, those all, I mean, those all came from Mike, Mike Jenkins, down in Florida, and thank you for that. And oh yeah, I have my electrical warning symbol here, which is also production made from the Expanse. Now you also have two lights on here. These are strobes, and these are, Princeton Tech Meridian lights, which there'll be a link in the description below. These are still quite readily available. They're still made. And these both started out as bright green, but I just painted them black uh, just to make it match. And then I've weathered them a little bit. I will not ever say that I am completely done with this because I will always find some way to weather it, to add to it, etc. Now, I do also have a little electrical connection here. Originally, that was the intention for that was to actually power the lights in the helmet which that ended up failing spectacularly, and I actually started a fire inside the helmet. Well, I'll, I'll gloss over that and hope everyone forgets it so I don't actually have to explain it. But just suffice to say, I started a fire in the helmet and I gave up on that. Now I have battery-powered lights in here instead of ones powered from inside the pack. But I still kept the connection, and I also kept the, the connection that I was going to use on the back of the helmet. So while I'm walking around, I have that, which adds a little bit to the helmet, maybe a little detail. I need to fix that because that looks terrible or I won't fix it and I'll leave it that way. Now, another thing that you can do if you buy one of these helmets, these TK1 helmets, on your oxygen hose, you're going to have this. This lanyard was actually intended to attach to the parachute harness 
to help keep the oxygen hose out of the way. It doubles as sort of a protector against overstretching your oxygen hose if you take the helmet off. By simply attaching it to the backpack, you can hang your helmet from the oxygen hose and if you drop it, it won't just disconnect. This will act as a safety lanyard to prevent if you're walking around in a con, you take your helmet off because it's just too hot or you want to talk, you want to eat or whatever and it falls, it won't hit the ground, this lanyard will stop it because it's attached to the backpack. So, but that's the backpack, which again, OGO Mach 5, some Fairwind tactical belt buckles or Cobra buckles, um, bits and bobs from this helmet and some Princeton Tech Meridian lights. And then of course I painted it to match the helmet because why not? It's my character, I can make him look like whatever I want. But I don't have a battery for that, so I can't show you that, unfortunately. But if you go on to Thingiverse and uh, follow the link below uh, to Mark Perino's um, files that he's got on there, you can see what these things look like fully lit up, and it's awesome. This thing, this thing has been lit up once. I need to figure out a way to attach that, apparently, because it keeps sinking down. Um, this thing has been lit up once, and it looks fantastic. Uh, I wish I could show you, but <laughs> I lost the battery. Uh, but that's that, so let's move on to another piece of kit. Uh, which is actually going to be the boots and the, uh, your little arm accessories. So these are the two things that you wear on your wrists, or at least the rough facsimiles of them. What they are is, uh, this is the tech light, which goes on the right or left arm, depending. For me, it's going to go on my right arm because I'm left-handed. Um, but this is a Streamlight Sidewinder light. Uh, an actual or original one. These are, they, they're quite expensive if you can find them. They're out of production as well. And it's actually bolted uh, using the same bolt that it uses for its clip onto a phone base that was created by Carl's Webb off of the uh, Facebook cosplay group for The Expanse. And it was just a 3D printed component, it's two parts. And the idea was to put a phone in here to basically do this. Now this thing, I believe is also made by Carl. And um, this actually has a uh, leftover Moto Z phone in it that I used uh, an image of the news alert screen from season two, I believe it's season two, yeah, season two. And it's just all lit up in there and it's just held in with some nylon strapping and it straps onto your arm. Bob's your uncle, it's all painted black and weathered. But the light still works and it goes through a bunch of different, it actually has infrared and, and blue light on it as well. So these are quite a bit of fun to walk around with and uh, this will stay on for about a half an hour and then I'll have to turn it back on. But that's okay. It'll do for now until I find a better way to do this. But in the, in the, in the short term, that worked out great. Now the boots, my mag boots, uh, these, these are first gear, what are called first gear, high mesh motorcycle boots. Now, a lot of the vac suit boots, there's a whole bunch of different brands that are used, but this is the one that I recognized and that I was able to find. And these are um, out of production now. So, because nothing is still in production that you use uh, to make these suits. But these are just regular old motorcycle boots that I weathered. You can see the weathering on it. And I added these, these leather pieces, which if I will link the video uh, from Tested where Adam Savage actually talks to Jim about how they make these. And it has a little light in the back, which if I can get it to turn on, there it goes, which gives you the, the in, now this, this panel here may be a little bit big, but these were actually made by Devil Squeezebox Studios. These leather patches were, and I'll link them below. Um, she's a, an extremely good maker and extremely good uh, working with fabric and, and leather. And if you have an interest in getting a set of these, I'll put the uh, contact information for her below. She's also the one that made my vac suit. First gear high mesh motorcycle boots with some leather appliances velcroed on the back and a little bit of light. Now that light that's back there, and if you watch the video from Tested, you'll have a much better, uh, it'll be a much better video, truth be told. But they're these slap it lights. They're apparently meant for runners or bike cyclists, I guess. But they're like the old slap watches uh, and wristbands, but they've got a light in them. And if you take this light out, if I can get it out of here, because it is held on, held in by quite a bit of tension. But it's just this clear acrylic band and a light on the end. And you just cut it short to the length of the boot. 
and then stick it in there. And, uh, and once you turn it on, you get the red light. And that's, that's actually how it's done in the show. It'll probably a little bit cleaner than what I've done there. But um, yeah, those are Slap It uh, LED slap wraps. And you can find these on Amazon. They're made by Night Eyes. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. I think they're like $11. They're rather cheap. But how cool is that? Neato. Now, in season one, season two, you've got many variations of gloves you can pull from. I have two different versions that are seen on screen. This first one are Mad Dog. I believe these are motorcyclist gloves. They're these vented gloves. And these are seen and worn by a lot of different characters. If you're intending to do the guy that you see in this bit of art or Miller, the character Miller, played by Thomas Jane, you need these Mad Grip gloves. This is the type of glove that he wears. Now, the Mad Grips are out of production, but they're still available on eBay. I believe the Mad Dog gloves are actually still available on eBay as well. And I don't have a specific model number for these. I wish I did, but I don't. But these are quite weathered, uh, mainly because I use them for maintenance around my house. So I don't particularly like wearing these gloves because they are very, very snug. But they are also very, very grippy, which hence the name Mad Grip. But these are the gloves worn by Thomas Jane's character. Uh, Miller, and in when he's going and he puts his pet bomb on, on uh, oh goodness, Eros. But that's the back suit he's wearing. These are the gloves that he's that he's wearing in that. But these are also seen on numerous numerous characters throughout the series. Uh, so these are the gloves I'll be using with mine. And now for the final bit, uh, the vac suit itself. Now this vac suit uh, is made from scuba knit neoprene, some nylon webbing, um, and Velcro and a zipper. Uh, oh, and some one eighth inch medical tubing. Now this vac suit was actually made by the same uh, person that made the uh, appliances for the mag boots, Devil Squeeze Box Studio. Her name is Sue and she's my mom. And she actually uh, tore apart a, red a set of red cap coveralls and used those as the pattern and made the entire thing from photographs. And I think she did a fantastic job of it. All of the molly webbing uh, is completely functional molly webbing. Uh, all of that was done by hand. Every bit of this thing was done by hand, uh, just basically guessing from photographs. And I still have some weathering to do to it because I'll never be completely done with it. But, and then this is this is the patch, the artwork that was actually made for me by, uh, by Mike Jenkins. I sent him a really terrible, terrible uh, MS Paint sketch of what I wanted my, uh, my mission patch to look like. And he, he turned it into that magnificence. So thank you, Mike, for that. I appreciate it. And that's just a piece of paper glued onto some EVA foam that I then glued onto the suit. But have a look inside the suit here. And much like the suits on screen in the show, these are entirely bespoke in that uh, they all had to be custom made. Here's a little bit of the tubing that's poking through right here. And you can see the construction of this thing inside. Now, this is the first vac suit she ever made, and i got to be honest with you, for being the first vac suit someone's ever made, I would call this a good one. Now, the uh, molly webbing and the black part of this, it on some suits, particularly Stephen Strait's suit and the main crew, the Rocinante, the molly webbing and the black part of it actually comes all the way up to the waist almost, almost to the top of the thighs. This one is truncated down here. And it seems that they vary quite a bit throughout the show. There's a bunch of different versions of these same suits. So I don't know that there is one specific way to do this. Um, again, this was all done from photographs. So it's a lot of, a lot of guesswork, but that's, uh, I added this pouch here to the molly webbing because while I'm out trooping at a con, I'm going to need a place to put my wallet. And, um, this is uh, as good as any place to put it right there. So yeah, there it is. There's my, my vac suit itself. And like I said, it's made from dance neoprene, or excuse me, uh, scuba knit neoprene, um, some uh, 1 8 inch medical tubing, nylon, Velcro, zipper, done. And I've, I, like I said, still weathering it. Probably will never be done weathering it. Now, let's put it all together and have a, have a look at it. And there you go, one complete uh, Belter vac suit from Amazon's The Expanse. Uh, I'd like to thank Jim and Mark and Mike for all the help that they gave 
uh, all of the 3D models that they created and the graphic works, the graphic work that they did uh, to make this thing possible, and all the information that they were so willing to share, uh, without question, it was fantastic. It was a wonderful experience to build. I will probably be building another Expanse cosplay soon. In fact, I am, um, and I will also. Uh, I would also like to thank the folks at the Expanse Cosplay Group on Facebook for being so open and supportive with information, and also to the folks at the Expanse for being just so wonderfully supportive of fans and open with information that made this truly possible. I hope that you found this entertaining. Please leave a like and subscribe. Please leave a comment below, and also consider Patreon so that I can consider so that I can continue making these uh, these videos and making silly stuff like this. Uh, once again, thank you again for watching.